the assistant minister to affairs, your honorable and his family, and the meeting. Kevin, the acting prime minister for the affairs, Mr. Peter Daniel Kirao. Kevin, prime minister of education, heritage, and arts, Dr. Daniel Jokan. The uh, chief executive officer of the EW Trust Fund, board, Mr. Isaki Taito. The chairman of the EW Trust Fund board, Mr. Kagi Nisam. Board members and management of the EW Trust Fund board, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Nisam Bolunaka, Namaste and Naimori. And a very good morning to you all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is such a pleasure and an honor indeed for my wife, Sarod, and I to join you this morning in my capacity as the President and Head of State to officiate at this groundbreaking ceremony to launch two very important historic and pioneering initiatives that will undoubtedly benefit our beloved nation, Fiji, but more so our small Rotom community. And those two are the official accreditation of Rotom's organic status and the launch of the Rotoman publication, Rack the Fair Plum. Now, the promotion of organic farming is embedded in our beloved nation, Fiji's 20 year national development plan on food and nutrition security, where the production of traditional food crops and agricultural and fisheries products should be promoted to enhance government's overall efforts to effectively deal with the detrimental and harmful impact of climate change, and at the same time, preserve and protect our pristine environment. Now, the accreditation of Rotomo's organic status and corresponding discussions on Rotomo's organic certification began in earnest about 14 years ago when I was a community worker and the advisor of the Council of Rotomo. Seems such a long time ago. In any case, ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to declare my personal interest and share with you my initial experience when I was a community worker, as I've said, and advice to the council, and became very unpopular following advice and efforts to ban the use of weedy signs in Rotoma during subsistence farming on the island. I did not endear myself to a lot of people. In fact, I was part of this organic initiative program and today I'm so happy and equally grateful to all of you for your individual and collective efforts in formalizing Rotuma's new status as an organic source of agriculture and marine products. We've come a long way. Now Rotuma's geographical si situation and isolation from Fiji and the world puts it an advantage from being infested with most of the invasive and harmful bugs, insects and diseases that could seriously damage and ruin the island's potential and capacity to produce more, thus enhancing the community's ability to self-sustaining and at the same time improve food security and contribute positively to the national economy. Now its pristine and marine environments, its pristine land and marine environments, its rich, fertile volcanic soil, its lush vegetational growth, and unpolluted biodiversity together with a resource-rich marine ecosystem creates a perfect natural setting for the island's initiative and drive to be successful in its bid to formally be declared and confirmed as an organic source of all natural produce. Now, introducing organic certification to the Council of Rotoma and the people of Rotoma was a major paradigm shift the manner in which the present generation of Rotomans will be compelled to properly utilize the land and the beautiful and bountiful natural resources that Almighty God has blessed the island with. Now, present and future generations of Rotoman will now have to return to the traditional manner in which our forefathers used to till the land without the use of fertilizers or weedicides and fish and protect the reefs and the surrounding areas. Ladies and gentlemen, it is so heartening and indeed gratifying to be involved and witness this new norm. People talk about the new norm. But this is a new norm. 
for the small community in Rotoman. In the law of land and mar marine utilization, which is in conformity and aligned to one of the Itapay Trust Fund Board's mandate, that of the promotion and implementation of initiatives to improve the livelihoods of Itauke and Rotomans. Now today is even more meaningful, delightful and indeed a proud moment for all Rotomans for us to come together to launch this organic journey. And thank you for your attendance and your presence here this morning. Thank you for your support during this morning's launch, which is testament of the ongoing struggle and efforts of all stakeholders involved, and there are many. The final realization of this long held aspiration and goal. The organic effort to declare Atoma as an organic island is the result of a joint effort and collaboration between the Council of Atoma, the Itauke Trust Fund Board, the Ministry of Agriculture, the Matana Taki, and the Pacific Community, SPC. Now, the Council of Atoma endorsed the proposal to ban the use of chemicals on the island way back in 2011. And this became effective a year later. In August last year, an Itauke Trust Fund Board team visited Rotoma to assess the island's potential for economic opportunities and after thorough consultations, one of the conclusions drawn from that visit was to relook at Rotoma's organic accreditation potential. Now the outcomes of which became the end result of the collective and valuable effort of all stakeholders resulting in the final outcome. Today's launch of Rotoma's organic certification. I have been reliably informed that the latest journey to Rotoma by those officials have been worthwhile as 40 participants, including chiefs and growers from Rotoma 7 districts, both men, women, and youths, attended the first series of training on organic farming. It's good news. Another important objective on certification of landlords around the island is to gradually expand the program to allow development stakeholders to properly manage waste in compliance with organic standards to its island's participatory guarantee systems, GPS or PGS, certification involved. Gee, that's a real tongue twister, that one. <laughs> now, at this juncture, I would also like and wish to personally congratulate the nine farmers whose samples met the organic land certification standard and qualified them for organic registration. I'd like to get back to that and personally congratulate these hardworking people. They are the pioneers of this program. Now, this achievement in July this year has led to the island's broader achievement, which was the official certification of the brand Organic Return, a new brand. Now, Rotoma is now in a position to sustainably produce and manage agricultural produce for the global export market. Now, this includes producers like kava, coconuts, and organic seedlings. And of these three, organic seedlings, due to their compact size, which offer significant free cost advantages for export, is worth pursuing. More about this from the experts. Now, the intention now is to train farmers who are keen to pursue the organic certification procedures of pollinated seed production. I've heard so much about this, I'd like to learn more. That's my information. Not long after we leave the State House, I'll be heading back to the island. So, Kevin, I'd like to come and talk to you and hear more about this. I'm very interested. Now, the Itaki Trust Fund Board, the Ministry of Agriculture and Pacific Community, as we see in the moment, Tamataki intends to pilot the project on the establishment again of an organic seedlings nursery for commercial purposes. Seedlings also assist in food security rehabilitation efforts after natural disasters. And if you can recall, when you had a pandemic at the beginning of last year, people went back to farming land and we ran out of seeds. So this is a good initiative coming in. Madam Minister, you and I have so much to talk about. This is an exciting, exciting new chapter for Thomas Organic Journey due to the expected wide range benefits the seedlings production will bring to the people. 
Yeah, ladies have an organic agriculture provides a host of benefits too, including healthier fresh produce, protection of our biodiversity, mitigation of climate change and adaptation, food and, that, and nutritional security, the prevention of land degradation and the creation of employment opportunities for our people. Now moving forward, more discussions with the Council of Return is expected in these areas of identifying relevant organic produce to be explored and exported. That will include possible healthy value adding products too. Now to this effect, the Interpay Trust Fund Board is looking at upskilling and capacity building initiatives, more trips to return. So that technically sound and capable people are identified to lead various projects to further progress returns organic journey. Now globally, the organic movement is a special and unique organization, as you know, which for obvious reasons is very particular and selective in accepting new members into its ranks, and this latest development is indeed an apt and timely development in our beloved nation's ambition and long-term plans to boost and improve our national, regional, and international economic status by enabling us, and in this case, to do to tap and benefit <coughs> from, tap, from trappings of an untapped and lucrative niche market. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Second initiative of equal importance this morning being with us this morning is to formalize today the launch of the retirement book Rat La Fayan Tuan. So please allow me to delve into this now. It is a publication which is superbly produced and authored by a retired school teacher and a self-taught and qualified Ottoman language educator, Mrs. Fawaro Titi Fanona, who resides in Ottoman. But thank God we are so fortunate that she is here with us today. So nice to see you. <laughs> In 2012, the United Nations Education Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, declared the Rutuman language to be an endangered language. Now, therefore, it is my humble opinion that the publication and launch of this special Rutuman language book or guide for our young generation and for old people like me too, who wish to learn and improve their knowledge and understanding of the Rutuman language, it is to be able, some of us, to perfect our ability to converse in proper Rutuman. Today's event is therefore historical, timely and apt. No, I not really Ladies and gentlemen, today's launch of the book, Rakla Fayam Rutum, is in line with the Ministry of Education's overall teaching program to advocate for the promotion of our native languages, which is also dovetailing well and a facet and target outcome of the EWP Trust Fund Board's mandate. The publication and today's launch of the book is testament to the perseverance and dedication of someone who is determined and passionate about sharing a vast experience and knowledge of the Rituma language. Someone who possesses an inner sense of pride for her mother tongue and more importantly, a selfless retirement elder who wishes to impart this immense gift to, today, to today's gen present generation and future generations of our people. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I alluded to earlier, this book is also a culmination of years of hard work. And for anyone who is keen to learn retirement, who can easily do so now because it is designed for beginners, regardless of one's age, and it offers a simple, easy to follow approach about learning the Ottoman language. Its words and pronunciations are complemented with visual and colorful illustrations to guide the learner. Right. Mrs. Titi Panula taught Ottoman language studies as a hobby. A favorite pastime activity and her love and passion for language saw her effectively teach three piece key. Preschool volunteers how to read and write a tune 
language whilst I was serving the mission in Fiji in the early 90s. Now, Mrs. Tifanua hopes that through her book, Rakla and Tom, another avenue would be made available to all of us wanting to learn or further a vernacular or the Rotoma language here in Fiji and around the world and be proud of our Rotoma heritage. That's a lie. I have been reliably informed too that the book will also be available online via the Turkey Trust Fund Board's website or via the shop online platform. So I urge all our brethren here in Fiji and the wider Rotoma diaspora communities around the globe wanting to learn and share their mother tongue to invest in this worthy the best initiative. Of I congratulate and acknowledge the collecting available assistance and contributions of all stakeholders involved and the accreditation of organic retirement and considered befitting and apt and talent. I also congratulate on your behalf, Mrs. Ford, for her passion, on tying Southwest Act in producing such a brilliantly researched and compiled publication it should be a source of inspiration and knowledge to young Ottomans and all the like who wish to learn and know more about their roots and our rather unique language. In conclusion, I would like to once again on behalf of my wife Sarate, the chiefs and the people of Rotoma, here and abroad, and Agony Island, express our most humble and sincere appreciation and gratitude to each and every one of you who are here this morning and those who couldn't be with us because of other commitments and humbly say to you, Navadeo, Taniwan, thanks. And with Almighty God's continual blessing, it gives me so much pride and pleasure to declare and officially launch the accreditation of Organic Rotuma and the publication of Rak Bafem Tuam. Almighty God continue to bless us all and our beloved nation Fiji. Thank you.